now let us see what happen with the pyruvate which is produced by the glycolysis so we have already seen that pyruvate or pyruvic acid is first converted into acetyl coenzyme and then this acetyl coenzyme is entered in mitochondria for the krebs cycle or citric acid cycle or tricarboxylic acid cycle then in mitochondria acetyl coenzyme is react with the oxaloacetic acid and produce citric acid and this reaction is catalyzed by citric synthetase citrate synthetase then the isomerization of citrate to produce isocitrate and then decarboxylation of two successive for two successive step leading to the formation of alpha ketoglutaric acid and then succinyl coenzyme the oxidation of succinyl coenzyme into oxaloacetic acid and then this oxaloacetic acid again react with the new acetyl coenzyme and produce citric acid and this is how it complete the cycle known as tricarboxylic acid cycle during this cycle the nadph and atp and gtp are produced that and then and this nadh plus it will enter into the oxidative phospho phosphorylation for the formation of atp into the and enter into the electron transport system that will see we that will we see in later during conversion of succinyl coenzyme to succinic acid there is synthesis of one gtp molecules means when succinyl coenzyme is converted into succinic acid there is synthesis of one gtp molecules means it produce one gtp molecules when succinyl coenzyme is entered in succinic acid in coupled of reaction gtp converted to gd to gdp with the simultaneous synthesis of atp from adp during krebs cycle there is production of two two molecules of co2 3 nadh to 1 fadh2 and 1 gtp the overall reaction of tricarboxylic acid cycle is pyruvic acid plus 4 nadh plus fadh plus 2 h2 plus adp it's given 3 co2 plus 4 nadh plus fadh2 plus atp and this reaction take all this reaction take place in mitochondrial matrix during whole process of oxidation of glucose molecule glucose product produce it produce co2 plus 10 nadh2 2 fadh2 2 gtp and 2 atp ultimately now let us see electron transport system we have i have told you that the nadp nadh that produced from the citric acid cycle will ultimately enter into the electron transport system which have certain electron carriers and electron move from one carrier to the another carrier carrier and this electron transport system is present on the inner inner mitochondrial membrane so let us see what is electron transport system the electron transport system is a metabolic pathway through which the electron carrier electrons are transfer from one carrier to the another carrier it is known as electron transport system and it is present in the inner mitochondrial membrane you can see in this figure that it have three regions the main center blue color region is known as electron it is shows the electron transport system which is present inside the inner mitochondrial matrix or membrane the left side region is shown the intermembrane space and right side the inner membrane inner mitochondrial mat membrane the matrix is shown and we know that in matrix 
Krebs cycle is take place and from Krebs cycle the NADH is produced. Then this NADH enter into the inner mitochondrial matrix in the electron transport system. So this electron transport system has a comprise certain following complex or we can say that five complex. First complex is NADH dehydrogenase. Second complex is succinate dehydrogenase. Third complex is cytochrome BC1 and fourth complex is cytochrome AA3. And last com last complex complex 5 it is made up of ATP synthase. So these are the complexes which present in the electron transport system. Now in e electron transport system one molecule of NADH2 gives rise to 3 ATP means one molecule of NADH2 produce 3 ATP and one molecule of FADH2 gives rise to 2 ATP means NADH2 will produce 3 ATP in electron transport system and FADH2 will produce 2 ATP. The oxygen play a vital role in removing electron that produce and production of H2O. The phosphorylation present of oxygen is known as oxidative phosphorylation. We know that uh, we have also discussed this phosphorylation in photosynthesis. That in photosynthesis, the phosphorylation means uh, formation of ATP. The phosphorylation in photosynthesis takes place in dependent on light. So it is known as photophosphorylation. Here it is independent of light so and it takes place in the presence of oxygen. So it is known as oxidative phosphorylation. Now let us see the structure of ATP synthase. The energy release and utilize synthesis ATP with the help of ATP synthase that is found in complex 5 means the ATP which produce is produced by the ATP synthase which is found on complex 5 com which is known as complex 5. The complex consists of two major component F1 and F0. The F1 is a headpiece in the peripheral membrane protein complex and contain the site for the synthesis of ATP from NADP, ADP. The F0 is integral membrane protein complex that form a channel through which proton cross the inner membrane. Here in figure you can see that the ATP synthase is made up of two component. First one is F0 which is found in integrated in the inner mitochondrial membrane and the inner side of the membrane inner mitochondrial membrane the F1 particle is there which produce which is responsible for the formation of ATP from ADP and the F0 component is responsible for the transport of hydrogen molecule or proton inside the inner membrane inner part of the inner inner mitochondrial membrane the passage of proton through the channel is coupled to the catalytic site of the f1 component for the production of atp for each atp pro produce two protons process through the f0 from the inner intermembrane space to the matrix down to the down the electrochemical proton gradient we also we have also know that for the formation of ATP the proton gradient is must and proton gradient, gradient is very necessary and we uh, we already discussed in photosynthesis that when pr proton gradient is breakdown during that time ATP synthesis. So for the formation of ATP the proton gradient is very necessary. 
Now let us see next topic. Next point is respiratory balance sheet. This calculation can be made only by only on the certain assumption that there is a sequential orderly pathway functioning with one substrate forming the next, and with the glycolysis, TCA cycle, and electron transport system pathway following one after another. Means the calculation of how much ATP are produced during this all the respiration. Respiration. We can ca uh, calculate on the certain assumption that yes, this this kind of processes like glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and electron transport system are uh, take place in sequential manner and certain particular order. That first glycolysis take place, then Krebs cycle, then uh, electron transport system. The NADH synthesis in synthesized in glycolysis is transferred into the mitochondria and undergoes oxidative phosphorylation. None of intermediate in the pathways are utilized to synthesis any other compound. And only glucose is being respired. No other alternative substrate are entering in the pathway at any intermediate stage. Means this point want to say that the only glucose molecules are converted or respired in the respiration. So this can be asked in the exam that which molecules are respired. So glucose molecules are respired in respiration. So it is necessary for all the sugars and all the molecules to first convert it into glucose. For the and only glucose is entered in the in the glycolysis. Then it then glucose produced pyruvic acid and then pyruvic acid converted into acetyl coenzyme. And we know that this acetyl coenzyme entered in the mitochondria and in mitochondria it produces NADH and ATPs. Then this NADH convert goes into the electron transport system where it produces ATP. So this is the overall reaction of respiration. Now net gain of 36 ATP molecules during aerobic respiration of one molecule of glucose. So this is important for the MCQ that from the respiration of one glucose molecules how many ATPs are produced. So the answer is the net gain of 36 ATP means the respiration of one aer complete aerobic respiration of glucose molecule will produce 36 ATP. Now next point is fermentation and aerobic respiration. The fermentation occur, the fermentation account for only partial breakdown of glucose where in aerobic respiration it is a completely degraded to CO2 and H2O. In fermentation, there is net gain of only two molecules of ATP. For each molecule of glucose degrade to pyruvic acid, where many more molecules are many many more molecules of ATP are generated under the aerobic condition. Means in fermentation, only two ATP molecules are produced from the one glucose. And in aerobic respiration, it produces at least 36 molecules of ATP. So, you can compare between this uh, condition. First, uh, let us see in uh, uh, anaerobic or fermentation. In fermentation, glucose produces only 2 ATP. And in aerobic respiration, it produces 36 ATP. 36 ATP. The NADH is oxidized to NAD plus rather slowly in fermentation. However, the reaction is very vigorous in case of aerobic respiration. Now, amphibolic pathway. What is amphibolic pathway? The respiration and Krebs cycle is known as amphibolic pathway. So, if someone asks you that what is amphibolic pathway and Give the examples of amphibolic pathway. 
सो द एम्प्यूबोलिक पाथवे इज पाथवे विच इन विच कैटाबोलिज्म एंड एनाबोलिज्म टेक प्लेस मीन्स कैटाबोलिक रिएक्शन एंड एनाबोलिक रिएक्शन आर टेक प्लेस इन द कैप साइकल सो इट इज नोन एज एम्प्यूबोलिक पाथवे अगेन इम्पोर्टेंट क्वेश्चन कैम कैन बी आस्क दैट वाई क्रैप साइकल इज नोन एज एम्प्यूबोलिक पाथवे बिकॉज इन क्रैप साइकल द कैटाबोलिक रिएक्शन एंड एनाबोलिक रिएक्शन बोथ टेक प्लेस एंड वी नो दैट वॉट इज कैटाबोलिक एंड वॉट इज एनाबोलिक रिएक्शन कैटाबोलिक रिएक्शन मीन्स द ब्रेक डाउन ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स मोलिक्यूल टू द सिंपल मोलिक्यूल एंड इट प्रोड्यूस ए टी पी और एनर्जी वेर इन एनाबोलिक रिएक्शन द इट इज अ फॉर्मेशन ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स मोलिक्यूल फ्रॉम द सिंपल मोलिक्यूल्स सो सो इट इज नोन एज एम्पीबोलिक पाथवे एम्पीबोलिक पाथवे नाउ लेट एस सी द हाउ डिफरेंट मोलिक्यूल्स आर रेस्पायर्ड फॉर एग्जाम्पल फैट कार्बोहाइड्रेट एंड प्रोटीन्स वी वी हैव सीन ऑलरेडी दैट हाउ कार्बोहाइड्रेट और ग्लूकोज आर रेस्पायर फर्स्ट इन इट गो इन टू द ग्लाइकोलिसिस एंड देन इट गो देन इट प्रोड्यूस पायरुविक एसिड एंड पायरुविक एसिड कन्वर्टेड इन टू एसिडल को एंजाइम एंड एसिडल को एंजाइम एंटर इन टू द माइटोकॉन्ट्री एंड गो इन टू द क्रैप साइकल सो लेट एस सी हाउ दिस मोलिक्यूल्स हाउ दिस डिफरेंट मोलिक्यूल्स आर रेस्पायर इन डिफरेंट मैनर्स नाउ लेट एस सी हाउ कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स आर डिग्रेडेड और ब्रेक डाउन ड्यूरिंग रेस्पायरेशन so we know that in glycolysis a glucose converted into pyruvic acid and then pyruvic acid converted into acetyl coenzyme and then acetyl enzyme acetyl coenzyme enter in the mitochondria where in a cap cycle it produce water molecules carbon dioxide and atp so this is about carb a breakdown of carbohydrate during a respiration now let us see how protein and fats are break down during re- during respiration so let us see first of fats how fats are break down so fats are break down into fatty acids and glycerol and then fatty acid goes to converted into the acetyl coenzyme and then this we know that then this acetyl coenzyme enter into the mitochondria for the krebs cycle likewise glycerol glycerol converted into the into the dihydroxy acetone phosphate and then it convert into the glycerol dehydrogen phosphate later we it form pyruvic acid and then acetyl coenzyme so this is about fats and now let us see how proteins are degraded or break down during respiration so first protein is break down into amino acid by the enzyme called protease enzyme and then by deamination this amino acids are converted into the pyruvic acid and later pyruvic acid converted into acetyl coenzyme where acetyl coenzyme is entered into the mitochondria for the formation of atp and it produces atp water and carbon dioxide molecule so this is about a uh, amphibolic pathway and uh, respiration of different molecules like fats carbohydrate and protein so we discuss about amphibolic pathway which means uh, the the amphibolic pathway means the respiratory pathway is amphibolic pathway which in which both this both the reaction are take place first one is a breakdown of micro, complex molecules and building up or synthesis of the complex molecules so it is known as amphibolic pathway or we can say that amphibolic pathway are pathway in which both the anabolic and catabolic reaction take place and the examples of amphibolic pathway is respiratory pathway we can say the krebs cycle is the most important example of amphibolic pathway now the last topic of our unit is respiratory quotient quotient the ratio of volume of co2 evolved to the volume of o2 consumed in the respiration is co- is called respiratory respiratory quotient 
or respiratory ratio. So respiratory ratio is volume of CO2 evolved upon volume of O2 consumed. This can we can the respiratory ratio we can calculate by this uh, equation. So the equation is volume of CO2 evolved upon volume of CO2 consumed. The the ratio is depend on respiratory substance. So the carbohydrates are completely oxidized and the respiratory ratio is 1. The CO2 and O2 equal amount evolve and consume. For the for fats, the respiratory ratio is less than 1 and it is a 0.7. For in a respiration of fats, it requires 102 carbon dioxide molecules upon 145 O2 consumed for the evolution of evolve of uh, 102 carbon dioxide and the ratio for the protein is 0 0.9 so what is the importance of this respiratory respiratory cushion so the importance of this ratio is to we can we can identify that uh, which kind of substrate are are respirated during this process during respiration so by this ratio we can calculate that or we can calculate that which kind of um, macromolecules are respired in the body so this is about respiration in plants now in which we discuss about respiration what is respiration and then we discuss about glycolysis uh, Krebs cycle TCA cycle uh, electron transport system and then we discuss about the amphibolic amphibolic pathway and what is amphibolic pathway in last we discussed about respiratory cushion so here we completed our chapter chapter respiration so thank you